You can be the right package at the wrong freaking address, okay? That comes with relationships, that comes for jobs, friendships, anything in life, any position that you play where it's with another human, you could be the right package at the wrong address. And you could put in so much time, energy, and effort. If somebody is not ready for that, and if they don't appreciate that, then they're not ready. Stop killing yourself over a job that will replace you the next day if you were to drop dead. Probably wouldn't even send you flowers to your damn funeral. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Hello stranger, it's been a minute since we last kicked And by the way, just got in town And I won't let all right, welcome if you're new. And if you are new, girl, what's up? My name is Dakota. Where have you been? I've been waiting for you to find my channel so we can sit down, do our makeup together, hang out, and just, you know, bond over how crazy life is. Because, girl, let me tell you one thing. If there is one thing that I have learned over... Let's move this because that's a little get. It's a little get. It's a little get. Wait, no, because I kind of like it, though, because I've seen myself. So how are we going to fix this problem? If there's just like anything I've learned over the past, I don't know, my whole life, like I'm 28, um, is that I don't know anything. Like I really don't know shit. Like you really will be thinking that your life is going in a certain direction or certain things are gonna happen. And the universe kind of comes in and is like, stupid. That you thought, you thought, you thought, you thought. You probably had the right idea, right? But the wrong bitch. Yellow. But you were wrong. Um, the universe has a really, freaking funny way of just humbling you man like i'm telling you so i don't know shit if there's anything that i've learned it's that i don't know anything jojo have you learned nothing i'm so happy we had that discussion so anyway girl it's gonna be part three of my daycare series if you don't know what i'm talking about i used to work at a daycare for about five to six years and some stuff went down okay some really crazy drama illegal things went down and I'm here just to kind of talk about my experience there I'm hyper aware that there are other experiences for people who are involved in this but I'm just speaking of my experience I'm not saying the name of the daycare I'm not saying the real name of the workers involved I'm not giving any indication to the location or whereabouts of this daycare so this is perfectly legal and I'm allowed to sit here and I'm allowed to express myself okay I'm so happy we just had that history lesson so anyway girl if you're interested grab your wine grab your snacks grab a notepad grab anything that you need okay and let's sit down and get into this shit together so part three. Oh, part three part three I'm just going to warn y'all when I start to talk about the director that I had before I left I'm going to get a little bit angry and here's why this director like I said, I have like compassion and empathy for the past directors because I'm not saying they were the best, but they at least had a little bit of like compassion and empathy. The last one that I experienced, I don't think she could even spell empathy because she had none of it. She was super condescending, super just like not a nice person. Now the assistant director, I will say, she she was great and I feel like if she was there at the time when I decided to leave, I feel like things would have went a whole lot differently. And I probably wouldn't be here today telling you all this story because I know that she would have kind of like stuck up for me, I feel, right? So anyway, so no hate or anything towards her. Um, or maybe she wanted me to leave too. And if so, then uh, you can also go kick rocks. No, I'm just playing. I'm not though. But anyway, so we left off with director number two getting fired. And I think her name was Cheryl the one I didn't like, um, was now basically put in a weird position where she had just gotten this role as assistant director, like, two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago, and they were basically expecting for Cheryl to come in and be like, all right, Cheryl, you know, like, you're gonna be running the building now, even though you don't have any experience being an assistant director, we literally just hired you because we were desperate and had nobody else, and we know that you are not qualified to run a building and we know that your boss basically just got fired and you know nothing about running a building but here you go like basically go do it and it was just an absolute just like shit show so basically what had happened was Cheryl realized that she was in way over her head and she ended up quitting and she wanted to give a two weeks notice and they were basically like no you could just go now like 
you really let us down like we thought that you were going to come through for us and you didn't and she's like I want to be here I want to work here it's just I cannot run a building by myself this was not in my job description this was not what I was supposed to be doing y'all told me that I was going to be an assistant director and now y'all are having me be a director of a building that I know nothing about okay thank you so happy we got that covered so she basically leaves so what they do is they have one of the directors from an apple pear like so far away like 40 to 45 minutes away they have her come in and she's kind of like the stand-in director until they hire somebody and they would just basically rotate different directors from different centers all of our schedules were all over the place um we were having during this time like families because they had oh my god this is the only daycare i know that would have drop-in tours are you okay is it crack Cocaine smoke. Why would you? Okay, you know, before we get started, I forgot we do have a sponsor for today. So, future Dakota, take that shit away so we can get back to this. Thank you. Before we get started with today's video, I do really quick want to give our sponsor a shout out, which is Dossier. Dossier, you guys know, you have heard me talk about literally over a million times. It's a brand that I trust with my whole entire heart, and I just know that you guys will love it too. Dossier is a luxury fragrance company that takes high end fragrances like Versace, Baccarat Rouge, Buy Sell Black Opium, and they make it into their own version but for way cheaper literally a fraction of the price smells exactly the same is long lasting when i say cheap girl like very very affordable now i first started using dossier when i heard about rihanna's favorite scent rihanna's favorite scent is love don't be shy by killian i literally talk about this all the time but this is literally like my story as to how i found them and i found a dupe it's called flora marshmallow it literally smells the exact same it's only 29 dollars rihanna's favorite perfume is like over 300 dollars I'm going to save my coin where I can. So I went ahead and tried Floral Marshmallow. I actually tried another company and I just didn't like the scent. So I went ahead and tried Dossier. And once I smelled this, not only did I put all of my friends onto it, but I had to try out their other dupes as well. Some of my favorites are Ambery Saffron. This one is actually $49, but that's because it's always out of stock, you guys. And this is a TikTok fave. I actually heard about it from TikTok. So when I started working with Dossier, of course, I had to try this. And this is a dupe for Baccarat Rouge. And let me just tell you my friend wears baccarat as well and it smells the exact same my favorite is the dupe for ysl black opium and this is ambery vanilla this one's only 29 dollars. when i put these two together or when i get so many compliments i don't know what it is but when you have a vanilla on top of baccarat as well it just really smells so good and one of my <laughs> tried and true favorites that i'm out of girl literally look at this there's nothing it's empty it's fruity magnolia this is a dupe for versace by crick by crystal which is an over like 120 dollars only 29 bucks 29 dollars like you guys spending over a hundred dollars going to get that from ulta versus not even having to leave your house you can order online only $29, gets here super, super fast. Shipping is impeccable. And use my code DAKOTA10 for 10% off. So you're actually not even paying $29. You're paying way cheaper than that. I just love these perfumes so much. They're long lasting. I get so, so, and I know like every influencer says that, but when I tell you like, go to the dentist, they're asking me what I'm wearing. In the mall, they asked me what I'm wearing. I was at a trampoline park with my daughter a couple days ago. They asked me what I was wearing. My friend Steve always asks me what I'm wearing. Like literally, you guys, it's long lasting. It literally gets like embedded into your clothes. It is so, so good. This is what they look like when you get them. So they'll come in a box um, and it has a little card. It will tell you what the perfume was inspired by, the middle base and notes as well. And also every single perfume comes with a trial size. So you get the trial size. You can try it out right then and there. And if you actually decide that you don't like it, it's not really your cup of tea now. Not only do you get to keep the trial size, but you can go ahead and send your perfume back 100% money guaranteed back, a full refund. That is how confident Dossier is in knowing that you're going to love their products, and I know that you guys are going to love them too. So if you want to go ahead and support Dossier, click the link directly in my bio and use code DAKOTA10 at checkout. They also are always having like literally a ton of sales. So if you stack my code, you can get like 30% off, girl. So like I said, use my code DAKOTA10. Uh, link is directly in my bio dossier thank you so much for working with me it's always a pleasure working with you and your team and i have been loving working with you guys for literally over a year now we have been working together and i just really love the company and i know you guys are gonna love them too so go ahead and click the link directly in my bio and let's get back on into the video okay anyway um and just in case y'all think i'm playing about dossier i literally along with my body tape that i have because i don't like wearing bras with like body suits have a whole tray of this right over here this one's literally empty fruity magnolia we love her personal fave ambry saffron honorable mention will always be ambry vanilla 
Amber Vanilla and Amber Safran are great together. Also, this is Rihanna's favorite perfume, by the way. And <laughs> just in case you were wondering, Rihanna's the best smelling celebrity. Like, everybody says that after they have, like, interviews with her, like, they literally would, like, hug her and smell like her for days. I hate how these are coming out. I always can tell the day I'm about to have by how my eyebrows come out. So this cannot be. This has to get fixed right now. So many people comment. So many people. All right. So I got like so much love in my last video. And thank you so much. But a lot of people were like, oh my God, you took forever to get to the point. And so because I've already on the point, I'm unsubscribing. And I was like, am I supposed to care? That's like coming into a facility and being like, I'm never coming here again. And I'm calling your manager. Bitch, I don't care. If you are subscribed to me, you know that I ramble. That is like my brand. Like I sit here and I ramble. Like this is not supposed to be a shit. I don't take notes. I don't take notes with this shit. This is just going off the dome, okay? Like this is not a channel. If you want to come to a channel, you want it to be prim and proper. And you want it to be like chapters and isolated incidences with credentials and notes and foot. Don't come on this channel for that. This channel is a beautiful disaster, okay? I'm supposed to show you how to live a perfectly imperfect life. And... When I'm on here, like, we're basically on a virtual FaceTime call, and I'm talking my shit, and I'm doing my makeup at the same time. This is not supposed to be <sighs> strategic. If y'all want that, go watch somebody else. Get somebody else to do it. This is not, this is not, this is not the channel for that. I'm so happy we got that covered. Basically, they were getting random directors from different places to come in and help us out. And then finally, they got this assistant director from an apple pear that was a couple towns away and they got her to come in they're basically like look we're desperate we need help if you come in and be the director you know that would be great and she was like i don't want to be a director because like i said we were one of the worst rated districts <laughs> of apple pear because there's apple pears all over connecticut so there's one in like every single town that you go to because connecticut's like huge and we were one of the worst rated because we had so like you wonder why it's funny because the regional manager um who was an absolute um would come in and she would basically say to us all the time that we were the worst rated center and that she doesn't want to hear excuses as to why that is why do you think that is? Because we have a new director every year. So how about instead of looking at the employees and being like, this is the worst rated center because of y'all, look at your inability to hire a good director. How about that? Out of my face, God. So anyway, like I was saying, I said, okay, well, how about you come in and you be the assistant director and we'll give you a raise. Like they basically made it worth her time. And so she was like, yeah, you know what? I'll do that. So we're going to call her, we're going to call her Fox. So Fox comes in and she introduces herself to everybody. And she basically, because she's worked at an apple pear in another district, she knows what she's doing. So she's like, when Fox came in, she was like our saving grace, like our mother Teresa, because we really needed it. This whole place needed Jesus. Oh, and like I was saying before, this is the only place that would do walk-in tours so most places you know because before you go to a daycare and drop your kid off there you want to see what the daycare looks like if it's clean um how it's set up and this was the only daycare that had uh freaking drop-in tours so most places you have to schedule a tour like you'll be like call and be like hey on this day and this time i want to come in they'll set you up and then that way the director knows like okay this family is coming in at this time i know it's not a time where the, you know it's gonna be a busy morning and we're getting all the kids situated like I know this is a good time where the building is usually calm it's the best time to show the classrooms because people are interacting or kids are outside so we can have them go in and actually see the classroom without a million two-year-olds running around no they would have drop-in tours which means that any time from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. you can come get a tour we used to have people come in at 6 o'clock at night for a tour when we would close at 6 30 what who raised you what is wrong with you and but you know what it's the building's fault because this is the thing apple pear did not care about the kids they didn't care about the parents they only cared about the money like apple pear because apple pear is a corporate daycare corporate daycares are the worst yes they're certified and that's great and you know that you're at least getting like curriculum but half the time you're not even getting it like there would be days you guys where 
we would have to do curriculum, which means like we have lesson plans. Like we were literally teachers, but we were not paid like teachers. Um, we had lesson plans, even for infants. Like they had to come in, we had to have a schedule. We had to have like certain um, education time to work on fine motor skills and work on like writing and reading and things. Like we were literally teachers. Like I talked to people who've worked at daycares before and I was like, oh, did you guys have curriculum? And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, you know, like lesson plans, like as if you were in like a public school and they were like, no, we were taking care of one-year-olds. And I'm like, yeah, that part. Like, but no, Apple Pear believed in having curriculum. But there was some days where we were so busy that we would just like, most days I tried to always do the schedule and curriculum. But there were some days, especially during this time, because, oh, by the way, I had my own classroom at this time. Like I said, I was working across from Allison. But... I needed a co-teacher because my my classroom was getting pretty full because if I don't say so myself when the parents would come in I would take over. so when you brought a tour to this this center um, you would bring the parents in the classroom the director would and the director would normally show them around the room and basically just like talk for us being like oh yep and here they do this this and that but I liked to really engage with the families because you know I gave a shit about my job uh, the director would come in I would tell her be like oh hey like I got this like you go do something I'll show them around the classroom I will talk to them I will get them to want to come here so every tour that came in my classroom I want to say about 80 to 90 percent of the tours that came in my classroom ended up enrolling their child because I was a good teacher so because of that, my classroom was getting really full and they needed to give me a co-teacher. But because they were obviously hyper fixated on getting a director and an assistant director so the building can run smoothly again, they couldn't do that for me at that time, which is understandable. But on top of us not having a consistent director, on top of us, you know, basically just running the building by ourselves before Fox got there, this is prior, um, they were still having tours come in. Who's going to give the tour when y'all don't even really, the, the fill-in directors don't even really work here like that. You know what I'm saying? It was just, they didn't even say like, okay, for this week we're going to pause on tours. Like, they, no, they just wanted money. They did not give a shit about the kids. Like, Apple Pear as a corporate daycare does not give a shit about the kids. Point blank period, so glad we got the cover. So basically what ends up happening is Fox comes in. And when Fox comes in, I get a little gleam of hope. And this is why. Before Fox started, there was a lot of illegal things that would happen at this daycare, okay? So let me just give you a couple examples. There was one time where a teacher was outside with the kids and she had gone inside. And when she went inside, she accidentally left one of the kids out there. Like she just left them outside. And there was other teachers out there, like, don't get me wrong, but what you're supposed to do is when you have, when you leave your classroom with kids, you have a little um, clipboard itinerary of how many kids are in your classroom. So let's say like Tommy, Billy, Kara, Leo, whatever. And every half hour you have to do checks to account that they are there. And the reason why is to avoid things like this, because obviously what she should have done is she should have went inside and she should have looked at her clipboard and said like okay let me look and see tommy's here okay cool lisa's here cool leah's here cool but she didn't do that so she left a kid outside and one of the other teachers saw that she had left a kid outside so what she did was she was like you know what i'm just gonna hold on to her and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to give her back to her teacher. So I guess she went inside and she gave her back and she was like, yo, like you left one of your kids outside. And the teacher was like, oh my God, like, thank you so much. I don't know how I missed this. Like, whatever. I will say like, it is a mistake, but like she left her outside for like a half an hour. Like that was really, really bad. So what ended up happening was this girl was old enough to speak and to talk and whatever. So they were going to, the director had no idea about this, by the way. Um, and the reason why is because, like I told you guys, they were illegally having other teachers close the building because they didn't want to be there. I'm not talking about Fox. I'm not talking about the director I'm going to talk about. I'm talking about director number two and even, oh no, this was not when director number two was even here. This was the first one that got let go. Basically, like they told her you could either be let go or you're going to get fired. So basically what had happened was they didn't even know because they were having this other girl close down the building and she didn't know about it because nobody came and told her because they were they thought they were just gonna like get away with leaving a kid outside so the girl's mother comes to pick her up and the girl says oh mommy miss like I think it was Paige yeah it was miss Paige left me outside today and the mom was like 
And not only was this a parent, but this was a foster parent, you guys. So DCF. So anytime that there's a DCF child and, and there has something to do with like them being left somewhere or them getting hurt, it's always a bigger deal than it is with the child who is not in a DCF or foster care because with foster care you have to report everything and the reason is is because if their actual mother finds out that they got left outside she could press charges against the daycare and possibly get it closed down so because of that like everything has to be reported so um Paige started like laughing and basically being like oh no that didn't happen she just is like She's just joking or whatever instead of just admitting like, yeah, you know what? Like I did leave her outside. It was an accident. The mother ended up finding out about it and it became a whole thing. Like DCF had to come in and investigate and because, um, you know, the papers where it says the kids names on it and like who's here at what time. At the end of the day, we have to hand those sheets in and they get put into like a little like filing cabinet and every hour the director has to come around and check it and sign it and when DCF came in to investigate they saw that a teacher signed it and they were like why was a teacher closing down the building when that's illegal and a director is supposed to be closing down the building so girl it was a whole freaking mess but that happened okay and because Paige was a favorite there she never got fired but had that been that's what I'm saying at this daycare it was damn near impossible to get fired unless they didn't like you let me bring up an situation there was this one teacher I'm just gonna call her Eliza so Eliza was a teacher that had started a couple years after I did and she was cool don't get me wrong she was cool she was funny like I really liked her she was great but she was not a good teacher she didn't clean her classroom she never cleaned the toys her classroom was the dirtiest classroom in the whole entire building and I will say that she had one of the most difficult age groups to work with but you could just tell she was lazy and that's okay like listen I get it like I totally get it like you just want to be here and get paid you don't really want to do much work cool but like maybe work at like a stop and shop or like a, D a DMV or like somewhere else like not a daycare maybe so basically what ended up happening was there was multiple reports of her being rough with the kids and um at one point my daughter had gone into that classroom and she loved my daughter everybody loved my daughter <laughs> so I never really had to worry but when she had moved up like there was a couple times where I picked my daughter up and I noticed that she was being like way too rough with the other kids so I kind of did say something and it wasn't to like snitch her out or anything but it was like I was genuinely concerned because I'm like you can't do that you can't pick a kid up by their arm by a single arm and like walk them across like you can't do that like, there was like just there were just multiple instances where she was super rough and I was not the only person you guys so many people had reported it and the office just wasn't doing anything they were like okay you know thanks for letting us know x y and z but they weren't doing anything and it's like girl what your your mandated reporters like if we report that we suspect that a teacher is being rough with the kid like you're supposed to do something about that they didn't even like talk to her like and also there was multiple complaints about her classroom being dirty like so many parents would come in and be like i'm gonna literally call health and safety department because that classroom is so dirty i've reported it multiple times they're not doing anything like um because there was a parent in my classroom who had a kid that was um one and then they had a kid who was like three four so they were like they would drop their kid off, they would drop the older one off first, and they dropped the second one off, and they'd be like, oh my god, I went to her classroom, and like, there was literally like, boogers and slobber all over, like, these toys, and she noticed it, but didn't go put it in the bag for it to be sanitized, like, it was just so dirty, and I'm like, girl, like, I know, I know, it's so bad, but I know. So, yeah, anyway, like I said, Fox got hired, she was the assistant director, we kind of started getting some hope, and I was like, okay, like, it seems like they have somebody who's qualified here, she's really nice, she's really personable, like, I really liked Fox, I still to this day like Fox, like, I have really not much bad to say about her, um, I just, I liked her, and I heard that now she's actually the director of Apple Pear, of the one I used to work at, like, I guess, like, after this director that I'm going to talk about in a minute, left she got promoted and I, apparently it's it's better now but i i don't know i don't know but she deserves to be the director there because she was great anyway so let's talk about this um this director that came in we're gonna give her the name of i really want to be petty and do like a very similar name but we're not gonna do that call her hound so fox and hound so hound comes in and she has no experience at an apple pear at all. The only experience that she has is being a director of an after-school program, 
which is not the same as like a full-time daycare. So they end up, you know, doing the hiring process. They introduce her to everybody. And at first she seems like she's nice. Like she's not as like personable and down to earth as Fox is, but she's nice. Like she's, she's cool, you know, like she's, she's, she's a little awkward, but like she's cool, you know, like she's not a psychopath or anything. Fuck, my beauty blender went in the powder. Oh, I can try to, I get, no, I'm so mad right now. Oh my God, this is just, this is not going to work. I guess I could try to do it with this. I hate using a brush for my foundation and just go wet it. I'm not doing that. I bought the powder and hope for the best. Because one thing about me is I'm not going downstairs. I'm lazy. At first, I liked Hound. Okay, and I will say that. She came in. She was nice. Um, she was, like, you know, trying to, to, to help us and whatever. But she just, like, could not handle stress. And this is a very high-stressed industry when you work at a daycare people think that working at a daycare is just rainbows and daisies and you just sit around and you're a glorified babysitter all day no you are changing diapers giving out food cleaning up teaching these kids how to write how to read how to do all of this stuff making sure that your classroom is not only put together but we had a theme every single month so we had to have our classrooms like say the month was like I don't know, ambulance or like first responders. We had to make our whole entire classroom with like little fire trucks on the walls and we had to change our stations because we had like all the like five different stations. It was like art, sensory, reading, writing, and library. So we had to change all of our stations and make them all decorated and laminated. Like it's a lot of work, you guys. Like nobody really realizes how much goes into being a teacher at a daycare. It's just like being a teacher at a public school, but you don't get paid like one. Oh. So what happened was, is at first I liked her, but she could not handle stress. So if you came to her with like anything that was too high stress, like little Timmy just fell off the chair and his head is bleeding. Like she just couldn't handle it. You could just tell that she was used to her after school program um, and that she was used to just like kind of working with like older kids, used to not being like relied on and needed as much. And you could just tell this that she was like way out of her element here. But I'll tell you my main reason with Hound. Hound, listen, I can respect people who are rude, but they own up to it. Like, if you walk around being like, yo, I'm a bitch and I don't care, I will respect you. You want to know why? Because you own that. I don't like the ones where they are, like, the condescending type of bitch. Like, they're, like, the condescending, like, type of, like... Oh, like, you know, like, I would give this to you, but I know that you probably wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, my God, I swear to God. She... She was so condescending and freaking rude. Like she, okay, I'll tell you about a perfect situation, okay? They decided to change the schedule. So we used to get our schedules every Friday and they would be delivered via email and they'd be posted in the front. And we had set schedules, set schedules. So it didn't change weekly. It was just set schedules, which is how it should be. And not going to lie, if you worked there a little bit more, you kind of got seniority. So if you didn't want the 9.30 to 6.30, you could go in there and be like, hey, like I've been here for like five years and like I'm really tired of closing every night. Can I please get the 7 to 4? 7 to 4 was the best schedule. That was my schedule. But then... Teachers started coming in and complaining, like newer teachers started coming in and being like, I have 9.30 to 6.30 every single day. It's not fair. Can we rotate? Little girl, you just started working here. Why are you asking to rotate? You got to have like two, three years on your back before you start asking to change your schedule. Everybody just knows it's how it works. So because these directors, um, you know, Fox and Hound were new, they agreed and they were like, you know what? It isn't really fair. So we're going to start rotating schedules. Oh my God. This was like so fucking annoying and I couldn't stand how they did that. So there was one day where normally I had seven to four, but this day I was put on 8.30, 8.45 to 5.45. I lived... 30 to 40 minutes away from this daycare. So I would drive there, get my daughter up, get her in the car, and we would be on our way to work. And she'd be on her way to school because she went to this daycare. So I'm just minding my business, listening to my Mary J. Blige, like, uh, cause I can't be without you, baby. Cause I can't sleep without you, baby. 
you know? So I'm jamming and all of a sudden my music gets cut off and I'm like, who took the aux cord out of the freaking radio? I'm like so confused about it. Maybe I like, I like, you know, swerved a little too much, whatever. Maybe I bumped into it. No, it's Hound calling my phone. And I'm like, why is she calling? Why is she calling me? So I pick up and I'm like, hello. And she's like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm on my way. And she's like, you were supposed to be here at 7.45. It's 8.15. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm supposed to be there at 8.45. And she goes, no, we're rotating schedules now. And you're supposed to be here at blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, that's my original time I was supposed to be there. Y'all want to now rotate the schedule. So now I'm supposed to be there at 8.45. So, and I was like, in my head, I'm like, who the fuck is she talking to? Like, there's a way to call, like, hi, Dakota, you know, I see that you're on the schedule today for this time, and I see that you're not here. And then I could have calmly been like, oh, yeah, well, that's because you guys rotated the schedules, and now there's a different time. And then she could have went up front and looked and be like, oh, you know what, you're right, I'm so sorry about that. And I get it, like, mistakes happen. But don't call me and try to tell me that I'm late or that I'm freaking not on time. What are you talking about? So she's like, I need you to be here like now. And I'm like, there's nothing I can do. I'm literally on the way. Like, what are you talking about? So basically we kind of like go back and forth and I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, but also I'm not on the clock, baby. So you can get it if you want. Okay. So basically I tell my friend Lizzie, which is her real name and she watches these. So I don't think she cares if I use it. I'm like, can you send me, can you go up front? Like, take a couple kids, go up front, and send me the schedule. Because maybe I'm looking at the one on my phone wrong. And it says Dakota, 8.45 to 5.45. So I screenshotted that, and I sent it to Hound. And I was like, the proof is right here, bitch. What are you talking about? And so I get there, and she immediately greets me at the door and starts profusively apologizing. And I let that go, because you know what? Mistakes happen. I mean, I'm human, and I make mistakes, and I get it. So I let that shit go. I let it go. Because I was like, you know what? It's fine. But that's strike one. That is strike one for you. Okay. The second strike was, like I said, this teacher was basically getting reported all the damn time because her classroom was dirty. She wasn't, she wasn't, she just wasn't, wasn't in. Like, she wasn't, like, a good teacher. Multiple complaints were getting brought up and nobody was doing anything about it. This new teacher had started. You could tell that she, like, genuinely cared for kids. She wasn't the cleanest. But you could just tell that she genuinely cared for kids. So she reported and as well. And uh, that, you know, this teacher was kind of being like rough with the kids. And as usual, they didn't do anything about it. So she went a step further and reported her to DCF. And um, they ended up coming in and investigating. And I guess after talking to some teachers that were in contact with her a lot like they never asked me or are the parents anything um because like i said my daughter was in the classroom they went to like i guess teachers that were like her co-teacher or like a teacher like across the hall like things like that and they all reported the same exact thing so she ended up getting fired now like i said it was impossible to get fired at this daycare because they only cared about bodies but because somebody had reported her to dcf which is what the directors up front should have done um she got let go when i tell you this teacher got ostracized disowned for reporting eliza she literally like all, none of the teachers were talking to her all the teachers were pissed at her nobody would say anything to her besides me i was like y'all need to grow the fuck up like she actually did the right thing y'all should be ashamed of yourselves for not reporting anything and then the directors were mad at her basically because they lost a body because that that's all that it was about it wasn't about like oh you're a good teacher over kids it was oh we need bodies in here so we can make more money so basically what ended up happening was the teacher the directors started giving her the worst shift to have which is 9 30 to 6 30 because you have to close like five million classrooms with five minutes so they were basically punishing her and they didn't say this, but you could just tell. It's like when you do something at work and they don't like it, like you snitch or whatever, you get the worst schedule, you end up getting the shittiest hours. It's just how it is. So she literally got ostracized. And that was like one of my strikes as well, because I'm like, damn, like y'all are fucking horrible. Like you say you want to come in here and you want to make a difference, but yet you're treating her like shit because she reported a teacher for being physical with the kid. Are you okay? Maybe this is the wrong industry for you, baby. Like, maybe, I don't know. But, again, I let that go because I'm like, you know what? 
I don't know, a situation. Maybe it was something less. Maybe, I don't fucking know. So I let that go. So my technical second strike was this. I started putting people who went to school on the schedule less and less. So basically what happened was this. I would work there full, well, at first when I, when I first started working there, I worked there full time. But then after a year, I decided I wanted to go back to school to be a teacher, which is gonna help your building and your establishment if I have credentials, correct? Okay, so happy we're on the same page. Thank you. So basically what ended up happening, I say that all the time, it's mad annoying. Basically what ended up happening, Dakota, shut up. Ugh. So basically what ended up happening was um i told them that i wanted to start going to school great whatever this was when i had like the first director they were so supportive they worked with my schedule so basically what i would do is i would go in there from seven i would um go to school from 7 30 to 11 30 and then i'd work at the daycare 12 30 to 6 30 all while being a full-time single mom so bitch i was tired but i had goals but then when i moved um into my own apartment i had to start kind of getting creative with my school schedule because what would happen is I was living with my dad at the time so I'd wake up and go to school and he would drop my daughter off at school for me and then after school I would go to the daycare and I would work and then take my daughter home so it just ended up working out but when I moved to Naugatuck I can't where is my daughter gonna go for me to go to school at 6 30 like I just no um so basically I had to end up I for three days, my schedule was different. So Mondays and Fridays, I worked full time. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I would work from 7 to 12. And when they basically had voted on board as directors, they were like, oh, like, why is your school schedule so weird? And I'm like, well, because I'm a full time single mom and I live on my own. And like, I'm trying to go to school to better my education. Like, why are you not being supportive of that? Because they would say, they'd be like, oh, you guys should all go back to school. You guys should all be teachers. You guys should all get your credentials. But then, when we wanted to go back to school and get our credentials, there was no fucking support. And it was like, oh, well, why can't you go to night school? They wanted the teachers there to work full time, 9.30 to 6.30 or 8 to 4, and then go to school at night. Would you do that? Probably not. Like, what is wrong with you? And again, it was just for the benefit of their establishment. So basically, one day, they basically tell the people who are in school they're like listen guys you know like we understand that you're in school and we understand blah 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 but you know we have to prioritize the full-time teachers and give them the most hours and when it comes to you guys we just don't have enough enrollment right now to give you your full 30 hours so we're going to give everybody else who's not in school 40 hours you know they get everything and whatever and basically like fuck you guys you guys are going to be on call some days or you'll just be working like shorter shifts so basically Basically, they were cutting our hours and punishing us for going to school and saying that it was lack of enrollment but enrollment was at the best point it ever had been at so like make it make sense and that's what i'm saying about freaking hound is like if you're gonna be a bitch just be a bitch and own it don't be condescending just be like you know what listen like your schedule is really annoying and i hate having to like you know wedge you in here and make sure you're getting your hours everybody else like sorry but like you know you're gonna get your hours cut i would have much more respected that rather than you making up that we have low enrollment and then they were like well you know if you guys start getting more teachers and more enrollments in here and more kids signed up we can give you more hours and i'm like 80 percent of my tours get booked so what are you talking about <sighs> i'm so done talking about this but the show must go on so what ended up happening is they would put me on call and even Allison, you guys remember Allison, was like, how do you put somebody like Dakota on call? Like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, how, like, you put a teacher on call that comes in here and doesn't do nothing. Like, how do you put Dakota on call? And so what happened was all my parents started complaining. All of my parents started complaining and they'd be like, why is Dakota not in her? Also, this was fucking with my money. Like I just told you guys, I was a single mom making it my rent was $9.25 a month. My utilities were like $200. I wasn't getting food stamps. So on top of my groceries, on top of my electric, on top of my cable bill, on top of my own personal bills, and my baby girl, I was making a $12.50 $12 an hour salary with that apartment. They didn't care. They did not care. And like the other people that they were giving like all like the full-time hours to basically did not have anything to worry about but themselves. And they would like call out all the time or they would like leave early all the time. I never called out. I never asked to leave early. In fact, when they asked me if I wanted to leave early, I would say no. To the point where they'd be like, oh, don't even go ask Dakota if she wants to leave early because we know that she's not going to want to. Like, So make it make sense. Like, why do you treat the good, the good teachers like absolute shit and the ones who don't do anything, you glorify them, but then you complain that we feel underappreciated. Make it make sense. So then basically what ended up happening was because my parents were 
the parents in my classroom were complaining. They ended up putting me back and they stopped putting me on all call altogether and they gave me my hours back essentially. So they needed me. They were like so understaffed. Like it was just a weird power trip move that they were trying to do. Basically they wanted me to like change my school schedule and I'm like it's already, I've already paid for my classes. Like it's, are you paying for my class? No? Okay. So glad we got covered. The same day that I was talking about where Hound tried to like call me and be like why aren't you here blah 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 and she ended up being proven wrong. There was this guy that came in and his name was Sonny and Sonny was basically like an investor when it came to Apple Pear, right? So he was like a very big deal, came in, had a suit on. You know who he reminded me of? Remember that guy from Lilo and Stitch, like the investigator for DCM? I'm gonna put a picture here. That's who he reminded me of. So like very intimidating, very like, just you could tell he like, he, he smelled like success, right? So they wanted to make a very good impression. So he comes in, I don't know who he is, by the way, like they didn't say to us like, oh, this guy is coming in, whatever. Um, I guess he just like dropped in and did like a visit. So they came into the class and they're like, oh, hey guys, you know, this is Sonny. He's an investor in Apple Pear, blah, 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 blah. So I was just myself. Like I treated him as if he was a parent coming to get a tour. And apparently I made a really good impression on him. Like he came in and was like, oh my God, your classroom looks so good. Because during this time, I forgot to mention, I had gotten moved from infants to toddlers and I took over a toddler classroom because this one teacher was leaving. And let me just tell you about her real quick, okay? This teacher, we're gonna call her Carrie. We're gonna call her Karen because she's a Karen. Karen worked at Apple Pear for like 11 years. She was one of those teachers where it's like she lived, breathed, died Apple Pear. She was gonna be there until she, she probably is still there to this day. I'm not talking bad about her, but she was a little bit sketchy. Um, She was in Apple Pear for like 11 years. She was like high up there, okay? And she loved this job. She would tell on teachers all the time, snitch on teachers all the time, try to get people to report all the time. She was that Karen of the job, okay? And when I first went to Apple Pear, I had this toddler classroom. So we had Todd A and we had Todd B. I was in Todd B with my first co-teacher, okay? Um, if you watch my pregnancy story time, you know Bernadette. She's an OG. She's the first person I told I was pregnant to. Cool. When she left, they gave me Karen and me and Karen had her classroom. And because I was pregnant, everybody knew that I was going to go on maternity leave. And Karen, I guess, apparently had a special attachment to this classroom because it used to be her classroom back in the day, like when she first started at Apple Pear in like the early 2000s and it got taken away from her because she never cleaned and she was dirty in the classroom okay so she got to take it away from her and she always wanted it back so she saw this as the perfect opportunity to take the classroom away from me because it got given to me once Bernadette left and she would go in the office and tell them all of these things that were not true things she was doing like she'd go in there and she'd be like oh I walked in and all the kids were screaming and you know nobody was cleaning bitch no that was you that was you. Like she would like tell on me all the time and make it seem like I was like a horrible teacher. And eventually I was like, you know what? Like I'm going on maternity leave soon. So I'll deal with you later. Okay. One day I go into the office and they were like, Hey Dakota, um, I just want to let you know that like, you know, you're going to go on maternity leave soon. And we just feel like right now, you know, the classroom is a lot for you because you're pregnant. So how about you just start like floating and helping out teachers in other rooms, whatever. And I was like, so basically what you're telling me is that Karen came in here and asked you guys for my classroom. And they kind of just like, their faces went white. I think they were expecting me not to call them out, but I did because I'm not stupid. This was my first director, not, not the ones I'm talking about now. And you want to know what the funny part is, is that I went back to my classroom because um, I was on my lunch break. So I clocked back in after having this conversation with, with them in the office, went back to my classroom and she was like, oh my God, Dakota, um, I'm so sorry. Like I heard that, you know, you're going to be floating now. And I just want to let you know that I didn't go in there and say anything. If anything, I want you and little Aubrey in here with me. And I'm like, how do you even know what happened when I just got told that I'm leaving the classroom? Like, how do you know? You literally just told on yourself. Basically, she went in there and tried to make it seem like the classroom was too overwhelming for me and for them to take it away from me so she could have it. That's what happened. But she didn't want me to think that, so she had to backtrack. Like, bitch, you just told on yourself. Now I know for a fact you went in there because how do you know before I know? Anyway, so... Everything came full circle because um, after I went on maternity leave, I went into the infant room, had my own classroom. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Great. But then they wanted me to take over 
Karen's classroom because Karen was leaving and you know Karen's been there for 11 years so Karen leaving is a big deal so we had this like huge like going away party for her got her this huge basket and she said to me I want you to take over my classroom like I want you to come in here and take it over but weren't you trying to take it away from me back in the day so make it make sense I thought I couldn't handle it anyway so I ended up getting her classroom so everything kind of came full circle but then the funny part is that Karen left and then ends up coming back three months later. So why do we have a huge going away party for you? Why do we give you a basket? Like, what? And y'all will see, like, listen, when I left this daycare, it was not on, like, some, like, oh, Dakota, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for being here. Here's, like, a gift going away basket. You're one of our best teachers. No, like, they literally just, like, let me go and didn't care, didn't tell none of my families anything. And only one teacher, Mindy Girl, if you're watching this, what's up? Mindy was the only person that reached out to me and was like, I'm so sorry for how they treated you. I'm so sorry for what happened. Like, you were, like, a great teacher. Like, she was the only one. All those other didn't say shit. So respectfully, disrespectfully. Anyway. Sonny came in that day and I apparently made a good impression on him. And he looked at Hound as he was looking at me in my classroom. And he goes, why is she not doing tours? Why is Dakota not being promoted? Like... She has one of the best classrooms I've seen in this whole building. She's so personable. She, you can tell she loves her job. Why are you guys not promoting her? So after that day, they took a really big liking to me because I impressed one of the higher ups, but also my classroom was one of the best. And they actually, um, Fox, like, told my friend, um, Brittany, like, I just love doing tours in Dakota's room because she has, like, one of the best classrooms. So, like, I'm just trying to convey to you guys how well established I was here the family families loved me any higher up that came in loved me like I was a good teacher they kind of started like selecting like favorites here um because this is what happened one day I come in and Fox is like here Dakota here's a candy bar and I was like oh like are we all getting like candy bars like okay I'll never say no to candy and she's like no we're only giving it to specific teachers because you know some teachers here have just been like giving us such a hard time and it's really annoying but we want to show appreciation for the teachers who are here every day and they show up and they do their job and so I was like oh okay like thank you like whatever but it was such like a like other teachers were seeing us get candy bars and they were like, don't you think that's going to cause some like, I don't freaking know. Maybe I don't know anything. But they started kind of like selecting like favorites there and they started like kind of wanting to push certain people out that either complained too much or gave them a hard time, like things like that. Like basically they just wanted you to come there, do your job, not complaining about anything, not report anything and just have it be rainbows and daisies. But like, it's called if you see something, say something and we are mandated reporters, so yeah. My real second strike with Hound was, like I said, I was in school and you know, first they took me and put me on all call, but then they decided to put me like officially back on the schedule. I was going through a really 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 rough time with um adrian at one point because like i said me and adrian uh who's my narcissistic ex got an apartment together he had moved out but then we kind of ended up becoming like on and off and i was going through a really hard depression and i decided that i needed to take time away from school get myself into therapy get myself back on track because i didn't want to live like with this depression anymore i wanted to properly take care of it and i just felt like i couldn't go to school and perform my best there while working while being a mom like i basically had to eliminate one of the sources of stress so what i decided to do was i decided to just put school on hold so i basically had gone into hound's office fox was not there and i had told her like hey you know i right now i'm just going through kind of like a hard time like i'm just i'm very depressed um i'm not feeling 100 percent my best you know like i'm just i'm going through a lot right now and basically i am going to put school on hold for the time being and I was wondering if I could like, you know, start working here like full time as I would in the summer. So like 40 hours instead of 30. When I tell you guys, this girl did not once be like, oh my God, Dakota, like, I'm so sorry. You know, if you, if you need any support, let me know. Um, I can't believe you're going through this. Like, I'm so sorry. Let me offer my con nothing. When I tell you asked me no details, asked me nothing about the situation, just goes, okay, great, can you start tomorrow? Cut the cameras. Imagine as a worker, you come in and you tell your boss, I am depressed, I'm not feeling good, I'm not in the best headspace, 
can I just start working here full time? I'm gonna put school on hold for a bit. Can you imagine being met with that response? Okay, great, can you start tomorrow? That's when I realized right then and there that a job does not care about you. A corporation, a job does not care about you. You are just a number. You mean nothing to them. You could drop dead on the floor tomorrow. They would not even think twice and they would have your replacement in there the next day. You are replaceable at a job always but where you are not replaceable is to your kids is to your family is to your spouse is to your friends so please if this video does anything for you let it teach you that please be fully present and give your 100 percent all into the buckets where you are not replaceable like being a mom or being a girlfriend or a wife or a daughter give your 100 percent effort into that when it comes to your job, you are replaceable, but you are replaceable in your real life. Take your days off, take your lunch breaks, take your PTO, do whatever you have to do, but take it. Don't be like, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself over this job and I'm going to make sure I'm here every single day. And if my kids are sick, well, they just have to deal with it because work is more important. And if I'm sick, I'm going to go to work because I want to show that I'm a hard worker. You guys, I used to go to work with like, after I got like root canals, like I get like root canal surgery and I go to work and I, and I would feel almost like empowered that I went to work because I'm like, oh my God, here I am in so much pain and suffering, but I showed up. It's like a validation thing. It's like we sickly are geared and like morphed into thinking that we have to have validation for our bosses like to, to for, for them to see like we're good workers and like please value me but i hate to say this in an environment that is toxic you it's just like a toxic relationship you can put so much worth and energy work and energy and time and everything into it and they're still not going to appreciate it you could be the right package at the wrong freaking address okay that comes with the relationships that comes for jobs friendships anything in life any position that you play where it's with another human you could be the right package at the wrong address and you could put in so much time energy and effort if somebody is not ready for that and if they don't appreciate that then they're not ready and the same thing is with the job. Stop killing yourself over a job that will replace you the next day if you were to drop dead. Probably wouldn't even send you flowers to your damn funeral. Like, please think about that because I spent so many years being so concerned over this job, wanting to be a good employee, wanting to be there every single day, never calling out, never leaving early. And I'm so happy that I fucking broke out of that shit because it was so toxic. So as I was saying before, I had basically kind of, you know, went in there and talked to Hound and told her that like, you know, I was going through this depression that I wanted to kind of work there full time and put school on the back burner. But I did say like, I am eventually going back to school. It's just right now. I'm not going to make it a priority because of my mental health, right? So she didn't care, was so insensitive, basically threw me into like full time. And then that is when I started to take over this toddler classroom, right? So as I started to work there full time and I became just there like more often, I started to see some things I just wasn't okay with. And like I said, at first, like they absolutely loved me, okay? Um... Like, they were so appreciative of me. They loved me. They spoke so highly of me. Like, there was actually one time because, <laughs> listen, I I'm a story time teller where I tell y'all my truth and I tell, I just realized I was supposed to drink wine with y'all, but the video's almost over. So you know what? We're going to save this for part four. <laughs> Bitch, get your shit together. I was doing something which was kind of naughty. Um, I'm always going to tell on myself, okay? Like, you can never find out anything from anybody else because I tell on myself. So basically what happened was is that we had this little app on our phone called ADP. ADP is what you go on to see your pay stubs, see your W-2s, um, to do anything that has to do with financials and work. And so I found a loophole and I found out that you could clock in and clock out using the adp app on your phone but we weren't allowed to because of this reason so i was late to work all the time y'all all the time eventually i got better but even when i lived down the street like right now the place is like literally like down the street from my house and i would still be late if i was working there like i don't know what it is but your girl got some time management issues um I'm working it out through therapy, okay? But I'm not a finished project. I would show up late all the time, and so I found a loophole, and I was like, okay, so like, if I was supposed to be there at 7.45, it would be 7.45, and I would be like five minutes away, and I would clock in on my phone. <laughs> 
that way it would look like I clocked in on time so I wouldn't get in trouble and then I would like sneak in at like 7 like 58 and like nobody would notice nobody would know but then after time they started like catching on to what I was doing so they like brought me into the office and they talked to me about it and apparently it was like grounds for termination like if they really wanted to they could have like fired me um but they were like we don't want it we don't want that we think you're such a good teacher we think you're like a valuable asset so we want to keep you here so we're just gonna like write you up and I was like you know what fine like fair enough like fair enough like I oh my god what's wrong with my eye I know what I did was not right and I know what I did was like not okay like I know I made a boo-boo so I was like no problem and they were like oh my god like really like that's it and I was like yeah like I I fucked up so I will absolutely take this right up and sign it and they were like oh my god Dakota like we just wish that every employee could be like you we, we wish that we had like a, a poster that said like had your picture on it and said like why can't every employee be like Dakota like that's how much they like that in the beginning okay but then when I started working there full time I started seeing things I wasn't okay with and I started like kind of like complaining because I'm like what's going on here like why are you guys allowing these things to happen when like there's kids here that we are responsible for so i'll tell you about one thing before the video ends so there was this little girl there okay and she was a dcf child and, like i said with dcf whenever there's like, an incident report where like the kids get hurt or like they're left somewhere like it's always like a huge deal right like if i like i will be so detailed in those incident reports where they have no questions to ask because if DCF comes to investigate, like, you're most likely losing your job. We had these bookshelves, okay? And they were drilled into the wall. They had gotten painting done over the weekend. And when we came back, the bookshelves were not drilled into the wall. The kitchen sets were not, because everything has to be drilled into a wall because if a kid goes to climb and they fall and they hit their head, the family can sue. So it, by state law, you have to have everything drilled into the wall. Well, it had decided to get painting done over the weekend, which cool. You guys want to paint the walls, give the building a new look. I think that's fantastic. So they did not have the maintenance man, which the maintenance man was an absolute joke. Every apple pear was supposed to have an, a maintenance man, but they decided to be cheap and hire one maintenance man for like six apple pears in all different districts around the state. Why don't you just have one maintenance man for every building? So to get this guy over over there to like do anything as little as like fix um a shelf that broke down or like drill the kitchen set back in it took him like months and they knew this him you know what don't worry about it come whenever i'm sure it'll be fine so what ends up happening this little girl who's a dcf child i'm changing a diaper and my co-teacher at the time is i don't know doing whatever and this little girl climbs a bookshelf and so i'm telling the teacher like oh my god go get her go get her she's about to fall the girl ends up falling and getting hurt and so i'm pissed because when i first went into my classroom after i saw i was like hound fox our stuff is not drilled into the wall we have one-year-old children one to two-year-old children eight of them in a small ass room you really think that nobody's gonna climb a bookshelf nobody's gonna climb a kitchen set like what is wrong with you and I told them I was like I don't feel comfortable being in there with all this stuff like unscrewed from the walls and they were like oh no don't worry you're just being dramatic it's fine she ends up falling so I'm like I told I call hound in there and I said see this is what I'm talking about y'all don't want to listen to me look what happened I said I'm getting an incident report and I'm writing that she fell because it wasn't screwed into the wall because this is not my fault. And then Helm was like, no, you can't do that because then if that happens, the state could come in, the state, the state. Y'all weren't thinking about the state when I was complaining. Y'all weren't thinking about the state any other time. Why now? Oh, yeah, because you're trying to cover your ass. Because unless it has anything to do with you and your job, Hound, you don't care. It's so clear as day. She was trying to convince me to lie on the incident report and say that she just tripped. Like she was walking around the corner of the bookshelf and just tripped. Are you okay? Just tripped. What? And just tripped and hit her head. But don't say that it was because the, the, the bookshelf wasn't screwed into the wall. And then best believe by the end of the day, the maintenance man magically appeared and came to fix it. Guys, it was like that for so many situations. Like so many things would like fall or be broken and we would just be told to like leave it there for when the maintenance man came. And there was one time where like I had like a, a broken um, something. Oh, it was another kitchen set in a different room that the kids would play with. It wasn't screwed into the wall. It took him three months to come in there. Three months.
that is just the icing on the cake going i'm gonna leave it off here in my next story time we're gonna talk about how this one teacher literally almost fought hound almost fought her another one was in the lobby screaming at both of them and never got fired got like one week off to cool down never got fired nothing um we're gonna talk about how her teachers were getting reported and nobody did anything about it um and we're gonna talk about the co-teacher that I think I named her Casey in the video. I got fired for having three boyfriends. Yeah, we're gonna give Casey her five minutes of fame and we're gonna give her some time. And you guys are gonna find about the teacher that got hired, that came in, that plotted to steal my classroom and get me fired, and ultimately was the reason that I left. Like it, like guys, when I tell you that the next story time I do, you're not gonna wanna miss. The tea is going to be like so overflowing, it's not even funny. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. It is free. Turn your post notifications on. That way you're notified every single time your girl posts on YouTube, period. Don't forget to give Dossier a shout out and use my code DECODED10 for all purchases at checkout. And if you're a new customer, you also get 20% off. I think they're also having like a Valentine's Day sale still. So if you stack my coupon, you get like 30% off. It's an amazing deal. And today's post notification shout out goes to so today's post notification shout out goes to Serena and I'm not gonna cry this time because I'm not on my period but Serena said hey Dakota thank you for your time and effort in making these videos I've watched every single one and I've listened to all of your podcasts by the way the podcast is let's heal can y'all please subscribe to it and leave me a review please that would be greatly appreciated um she said I've been, i'm not in the dating game been married now for six years together almost 13 however your videos are so enlightening and informative for all whenever you post i have to watch it's so addictive I i've had toxic one-sided friendships that i recently just realized it wasn't doing any good trying to fix them you're so beautiful inside and out i could tell that you will be going somewhere in your life and you are strong and smart for waiting for mr right you're a wonderful mother and inspired to us all keep it up you're literally one of my favorite youtubers girl serena thank you so 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 much for your kind sincere and sweet comment i'm actually not having a great week this week um as you can tell i fucking sliced my finger open the other day i thought i was going to eat stitches so many things have been happening this week which is why i'm just like it's fine though we're gonna be okay this comment really did like bring so much happiness to me so thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for writing this and thank you to all of you for just always supporting me and loving me like i said y'all are like literally my family my virtual besties so every time you guys comment something sweet i just get so happy and so if you want to be on the next post notification shout out all you gotta do is turn your post notifications on comment something down below and then when i go live i will select your comment and you could possibly be the next post notification shout out so that is it for today you guys stay safe wear condoms don't let anybody's dusty crusty rusty busty musty sun get you in your feelings and i'll see you in my next video bye I got the plug, I made the call for me